So, uh, welcome. As a as a chairman, it will be a schizophrenic feeling for me to give the floor to Martin Landa. So I will try my best. Uh, this is the last uh, presentation of this session. I will try to close the door. Perfect. So uh, I'm going to present a project which is which is called Smodep 2D. It's one one of the uh, erosion models available in the market. Uh, I will be presenting the first part, and the second part will be presented by my colleague Andrzej Peshek. Um, but I mean, uh, real credits uh, must be acknowledged to uh, other colleagues of us, uh, uh, Jakub uh, Jeřábek and Petr Kafka, who are uh, uh, true authors of the project. They are hydrologists. This is the important point. Uh, me and my colleague were responsible for technical part, so from programming point of view, and we, are, we were introducing some new GIS functionality. We are from the uh, Department of Geomatics at uh, the Czech uh, Technical University in Prague. So that's the important, question, uh, the important point. We are not hydrologi hydrologists, we are programmers, or we are from the Department of Geomatics. So, if you, uh, if, you have, uh, if you want to have a real fun, try to ask us some hydrology-related questions after the presentation. I can promise that you will get ha hardly any answer from us. You can ask us about programming, about GIS, but not about hy hydrology. You can ask, of course. So, uh, this is a small introduction. So, first of all, what is Smoderp 2D? I will try to explain. Uh, so this is one of uh, erosion models. It's physically based. It's important to mention. It's a, a soil, a soil uh, it's a surface runoff erosion mo uh, model, uh, which is designed uh, to compute or to do computation in uh, episodes. It means that, uh, I mean, from erosion point of view, uh, the big erosion events are usually caused by huge rainfall, and it's called episode from, from uh, the point of, uh, from the terminology point of view. Uh, uh, the model is uh, typically used to, uh, to, 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 uh, to help designing measures which could decrease or, or prevent uh, big erosion events in a specified area of interest. Uh, the project is written in Python it's an uh, open source project uh, available uh, since 2018 uh, on GitHub. And uh, it's licensed under GNU GPL ver version 3. So this is the most important points about the project. About the history, it's a long term uh, or lo long, uh, it's long term running uh, project which I mean the development is basically dri driven by my colleagues from Department of Landscape Water Conservation uh, Department at the Czech Technical University. Uh, we, as, uh, as uh, people from Department of Geomatics, we joined the team like two years ago just to help with the programming part uh, uh, of the project. Uh, as far as I know, the, the project was developed uh, many, many years ago, or the development started many, many years ago. Originally, it was developed as a, as a surface runoff model simulated by profile model, so it means the 1D version. It was called Smoder 1D. Then it was uh, later, it was uh, redesigned uh, using a spatially distributed model, so that's how Smoder 2D was born. Uh, it was originally written in Fortran, so you can guess how how uh, how uh, how old the software could be. They 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 started development like ten, maybe fifteen years ago, maybe longer. Uh, then it was uh, rewritten to uh, Visual uh, Visual Basic, and currently it's written in Python. Uh, so what I will present, I will present uh, uh, recent work which uh, has been done. Uh, we started, or we joined the team last year, and uh, I will present some uh, major refactoring and some 
uh, functionality improvements which uh, have been done uh, recently. Uh, before that, just one slide still about Smodar 2D, uh, 2D model. Uh, it's a model which belongs to the family so-called GIS-based uh, hydrological models. It means that a GIS software is uh, used for, uh, the, for geospatial data processing or processing. Uh, it's based on a raster cell-by-cell cell cell mass uh, balance information, which includes some key hydrological uh, hydrological uh, f features, it's not the right word. I mean uh, effective uh, precipitation, uh, 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 surface runoff, and uh, stream, uh, uh, stream network routing. Uh, stream network routing is done by line by line using uh, user-defined uh, polyline layer. If you really want to know something more, about the project from hydrological point of view, there is a uh, related paper which should be uh, published uh, uh, recently, or soon, sorry. Okay, so you see that nice ASCII logo? That's, that's, that's something what, what I really like. And how, how Smother works, uh, basically, the, the, the workflow contains uh, three, uh, three major steps. In the, uh, at the beginning, the, the data are pre-processed, and this is the important point from my point of view, because in this part, GIS software plays the major role. Uh, basically, there are two, two important parts. First, uh, uh, the soil properties are assigned to each polygon, which defines the area of uh, interest. And then uh, it's important to assign uh, order uh, to uh, watercourse network reaches. And other tasks, I mean, it's quite, quite complex. Uh, in the second part, uh, model computation starts. Uh, it's important to mention that, uh, that the computation is done uh, using arrays, uh, or better to say, it's, uh, the computation is uh, array-based. Uh, we are using a well-known uh, NumPy library, which is, I mean, not surprising. And in the last part, uh, resultant data are, uh, are stored in uh, output directory, and this, this part is done by, uh, by the same GIS, GIS package which is used in the first in the first part so basic workflow and this is maybe the most important slide uh, this is the overview of the key points i would like to uh, present here so ongoing development so we started or the main goal was to do major refactoring because the code base uh, was uh, quite complicated it was not well written, and so the major goal was to do some refactoring. Uh, the, uh, maybe the, the most important point was to, uh, to, to separate clearly a data preparation package from model, model uh, computation package. That was a very important point because, or crucial point, because uh, thanks to the clear separation, we were able to introduce support for other GIS packages. Uh, I mean, uh, originally only uh, proprietary uh, S3 ArcGIS uh, platform was support. So that was our goal to introduce support for other GIS packages, uh, ma namely uh, two widely used open source uh, platforms, Grass GIS and QGIS. So that's, that was our uh, uh, major goal or major goal, let's say. And uh, at the end of presentation, my, my colleague will, will present uh, some experiments related to uh, uh, parallelization. Uh, okay, so that, that's our important, important items. 
we are go going to present. Maybe from, I mean, on the right side, you can see the di diagram, which is, I mean, you can clearly see that uh, the data preparation package is, is uh, basically uh, depending on, uh, on a given or specified uh, GIS software. And then, I mean, the second part, uh, model computation is basically done uh, by, by Num NumPy. Uh, what I'm, what I'm go, going to present some GIS tools we designed and uh, uh, introduced into this modern project. Uh, these tools are doing basically the similar thing. Uh, things, uh, there are three options basically. You can perform data preparation only, so the first step, or you can perform only the second step, the model uh, computation, or uh, quite, I mean, usually you want to perform the whole or full uh, workflow. So you want to start with uh, data preprocessing and then mo model computation. And usually you are interested about uh, resultant data. Could it be? This, this part I already mentioned that currently Smodep is supporting three different uh, GIS platforms, uh, S3 ArcGIS. Uh, originally, only version 10 was, uh, was supported. We introduced uh, support for version Pro, the, the new generation of, uh, of this software, and uh, other two uh, open source platforms like RAS and QGIS. So first of all, I would start with ArcGIS because it was originally uh, supported, so it makes sense to start with that. So there is a there is a, a standard ArcGIS uh, uh, tool uh, toolbox, which allows you to run the data preparation part or the model computation or the whole uh, workflow. You need to you need to fill some some input parameters. Uh, the important thing is that uh, the data preparation part is quite I mean not not surprisingly. Uh, performed by native RGIS tools. Why not? Uh, because, I mean, the whole project is written in Python. Uh, the GIS uh, functionality is, uh, is called uh, via uh, Python library ArcPy well-known. Uh, because we wanted to support also a uh, uh, funny ArcGIS Pro version, uh, we uh, introduced support for Python 3, which I mean makes sense if when I mean uh, if you if you are programming in Python, you know that Python 2 is uh, it will be almost dead in few months officially. It will be not supported, but still I mean it's used in ArcGIS 10, so it will remain for for a while. All the code, uh, including uh, Arc Toolbox, is available on GitHub. So, so uh, now let's let's switch to to the second uh, supported platform, which is uh, Grass GIS. So it means that a new tool uh, for Grass was uh, developed. Uh, in Grass terminology, it's a Grass module or Grass add-ons. Add-ons is like a plugin, something like that. Uh, the tool is called Ars Moderb and it do the same as the ArcGIS toolbox. It allows you to perform all the steps or, or uh, specified steps. It's possible to install it as a, a similar add-ons add tools in Grass using G extension module. And of, of course, the data preparation, the GIS part, is performed by Grass provider, by native Grass tools, using PyGrass library. PyGrass library was chosen because uh, there are two basically Python libraries you can use in Grass. Uh, PyGrass, uh, uh, PyGrass allows you to run existing Grass modules, but uh, you can also uh, perform some GIS uh, uh, computation using uh, Python AP. So on, on the right side, you can see uh, par part of the code. Uh, I mean, uh, the vector map is open and you are doing some tricks uh, using Python AP. Uh, 
So you don't need to call only existing GRASS modules or tools. The important point is that uh, the, uh, the, 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 the GRASS tool uh, assumes that the GRASS is running in Python 3 environment, which is, I mean, if you are using GRASS, you are surprised because, I mean, still GRASS, the latest version 6.7.6, uh, uh, is operating still in Python 2 environment, so basically this tool requires uh, version 7.8, which is the first uh, version of GRASS which is running in Python 3 environment. Uh, it's quite fresh stuff. Uh, first release candidate of this GRASS version was, uh, is available just a few days. Okay, so GRASS, QGIS. So this is the last, uh, last uh, supported platform I will, be sp I will be speaking about. Uh, so, the new QGIS plugin was developed. It was developed for QGIS 3 version. It's quite, I mean, uh, it's understandable because it's a current uh, long-term uh, long, long re release uh, version. Uh, it's also available from GitHub. Of course, I mean, when, when the final release will be available, we are planning to upload it to official QGIS repository, but it will take some time. Uh, data data preparation uh, data preparation uh, is done surprisingly not by QGIS but by GRASS. So it means that uh, QGIS plugin depends on GRASS software, which is I mean not so big problem because usually, uh, uh, especially for Windows users, if you install a QGIS on your Windows machine, uh, you will get also GRASS installed. So it's not so big deal more problem. So I mean the, the, the data preparation part is performed by, by GRASS and uh, not by QGIS. Uh, because QGIS 3 uh, is running in Python 3 environment, then I mean we are also requiring gra at least uh, GRASS GIS 7.8. So currently it's uh, quite tricky to, to, uh, to establish working environment because uh, Grass 7.8 hasn't been released yet, but it will, it will, it will happen. It will happen quite soon. On the right side, you can see you can see a basic workflow how uh, uh, QJS uh, plugin works. So basically, uh, uh, the input parameters are loaded. I mean, the input parameters which were given by the user uh, are loaded. Uh, then I mean uh, you, uh, because uh, for I mean to perform a competition in grass you need to have some grass location available. Uh, grass location is something like project if you don't know grass so let's let's call it project. So uh, uh, grass creates a temporary location somewhere. Uh, it loads the data, uh, imports or link depends on. Uh, uh, I mean depends. Uh, rasters are linked, uh, vector data are imported because of the top, top, topology cleaning, let's say. And then, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the plugin can run, it can do the, the same thing as uh, RGIS uh, toolbox, it will do uh, data preprocessing and it will start, start uh, model computation using NumPy. And there's the last step, of course, I mean, uh, as a QJS user, you would like to see the resultant data in a map canvas, so it must be done somehow. And now it's, uh, it's a time uh, I, would, I would like to introduce my colleague, Andre Peshek, he's stud studying for PhD at the Czech Technical University, and he was he, was, he spent some time with experimenting uh, with TensorFlow and this quite fancy stuff. So he will he will uh, explain you what he did. Hi. Uh, so my uh, my role in this project was to uh, to make all the computations uh, faster because the the speed limits of of uh, Smodarp were on the one of the most crucial uh, crucial aspects of the of the algorithm 
So to, uh, to uh, re reduce the computation time, we, uh, we have decided to uh, parallel, uh, parallelize the, the computations after the data pre-processing or, or preparation part. And uh, to, to do this, the, the, first, uh, the first step was to uh, change the loop-based computations into, into metrics-based uh, metrics ones. Uh, because uh, in the in the old code, uh, even though it's it's using NumPy, uh, it is uh, there is a NumPy array for for every pixel, and because the the code is written in in Python, it is extremely slow to uh, to loop through uh, through every pixel, so it is much faster to uh, to use uh, matrices for this. And to, uh, f for this, uh, we have decided to, uh, to use TensorFlow, also because uh, TensorFlow supports uh, the parallelization for both CPU and GPUs. Uh, so when, when a user doesn't have access to, uh, to TensorFlow, uh, to, uh, to GPUs, he can still run the parallelized code on, on CPUs. And sometimes uh, there is still NumPy, because uh, sometimes it, it, it wasn't possible to, uh, to avoid uh, the, the loops, and it is incomparably faster to loop through, through a NumPy array instead of, of a TensorFlow tensor. Um, the, the strength of uh, TensorFlow is, is its usage of, of so-called uh, computation graphs, uh, it looks like this, uh, so, so you can imagine a, a mathematical operation. Uh, you divide it into uh, variables and operations, and you can see that uh, that for some uh, for some operations, uh, you have uh, prerequisites. You need to know all the variables coming into this operation. But sometimes, uh, for example, when you have this uh, multiplication and the addition. They are not depending uh, on uh, on each other, so uh, so there is no reason to uh, to uh, make them uh, one after each other. They, and they can be in done uh, done in parallel. And the nice thing of TensorFlow is that uh, it firstly creates this and uh, this computation graph, and then then uh, when when there is something not depending on uh, on other stuff, it directly sends these and uh, these computations to to different cores for, for CPUs or different threads for, for GPUs. Uh, to, uh, here are some, uh, some results of this, uh, of this uh, parallelized branch. It's called experimental because, uh, because not, uh, not everything in the code was, was uh, rewritten, not yet. And also because I want to show you that, uh, that not every time it makes sense. Uh, because, yeah, no, f uh, for example, the, the word GPU, it's, it's like a magic word nowadays, and everyone want, uh, who, who wants to look like a, like a, like a good nerd is, is telling that he's going to run his code on GPUs. Uh, but beware, because, uh, yeah, I don't want to s uh, sell your dreams down the river, but uh, it doesn't make sense every time, as, uh, as you can see. And this is the, the, the important table, and the, the other one is just explaining these, uh, these architectures used. And, uh, so, and so I would like to show the, the last column, which is showing that the parallelized branch is um, much faster than, than the, the single CPU one. It's, it's almost like two times faster. Uh, and, uh, so, and so, this is the, the column showing that uh, the parallelization works, and this is the column show, uh, showing that the parallelization doesn't work, because for, for extremely small data, uh, the parallelized version is 10 times or, or even 20 times slower. Uh, and the, the crucial point for this is the, in this uh, graph initialization of TensorFlow, because it's, it's um, Taking some time, so uh, so if the computation itself can be uh, really fast, uh, then there is no uh, no uh, like 
it doesn't make any sense to, uh, to spend some time for the graph initialization. And also it is even much slower for, for GPUs because the transfer of um, uh, the transfer of data between your random access memory and the GPU inner memory is also taking some time. So this is just to, sh to show the reason why it will be always just a branch and not the, not the master version um, because yeah, sometimes it makes sense, uh, especially if you are working with, uh, with bigger data, uh, you can save a lot of time by, by using the parallelized branch. But if you are working just, uh, just with a small area, just forget about it. Forget about the fact that uh, that everywhere you have seen that uh, GPU is is the right choice. Uh, because we are running of time, uh, running out of time. Uh, just a few words. We were we are also experimenting with uh, CPU based uh, parallelization, which is I mean that I mean the the, the key idea is that uh, you will split the area into irregular tiles based on sub catchments but i mean it's uh it's maybe we can skip it for now because we are we are running out of time so thanks thanks for attention first of all you can follow us on github you can enjoy uh, filling some bug reports uh we are close to some release candidates i hope uh, during during autumn or in winter we will release some some can uh, release candidates beta version and the final version I hope will be released something like in the beginning of the next year. We tried to uh, make our presentation as long as possible to avoid to avoid answer, uh, questions as you can see. Uh, no, it was a joke. Uh, please, if you have any questions you can ask. So please. And you know the, the lunch is uh, waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, do you have some question? If you have, please, I mean, uh, in the case that it's, uh, you are a hydrologist, uh, feel free to, to contact my colleagues, uh, Peter Kafka and uh, Jakub Vyřabek, uh, they will be happy to discuss with you. Uh, they like to discuss, let's say. So, do you have some question? Yeah, you can you can ask, but uh, you will just hear uh, uh, nothing. <laughs> or maybe maybe you can you can try, and I can ask the colleagues. Maybe we will be able to to answer. What kind of rain data do you have? Sorry. What kind of rain data do you import? Uh, uh, the data, rain, the rain data. Rain data. Uh, well, uh, there are some, uh, some, yeah, maybe, maybe, le maybe uh, in uh, during a break I can show you some examples. Maybe it's better, yeah. and uh, feel free to contact us uh, by mail. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not able to, to answer as I promised. Okay, another question, which I cannot uh, answer. Thanks a lot for attention and enjoy lunch. <laughs> <laughs>